Is it in there? Is it up there? Where is it? Is it in there somewhere? How is it getting us? Like, isn't that thing in the way? Yeah. All right, guys. Um, welcome back to New Record Day and GR Research. This is Danny Ritchie of GR Research. And this video, I think, will be on both of our channels. Okay. I think that's what we're going to do. So, okay. uh, Danny has been talking about this topic with me. We'll go to lunch sometime for quite some time. And... He finally made this video, and he sent it over to me a while back, and he's like... Yeah, it's been about a month, I guess, huh? Yeah. He's like, watch this, vi watch this yeah. video and tell me what you think. I kind of stewed on this one for a little bit. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. So, without, you know, I don't want to build up too much suspense here. Watch this video. Watch it in its entirety. This is an important video, and there's a lot to talk about. And then at the end... We'll be back, and we're going to discuss some of the things that were brought up in the video and see okay. if we can kind of unpack this, because I think that there is there is some, there's a lot that you discuss, obviously, but there's also going to yeah. be maybe some stuff that can be taken out of context, or okay. people might not totally understand what you meant by what you were saying, and since we're, we're friends and I know your heart, I know what you meant throughout this video, and I want to be able right. to... Give you the opportunity to. All right, <laughs> it's a lot. Throw so... it out there. All right, we're gonna roll the clip, and we'll see you guys at the end of the video. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to GR Research. We're today we're doing something a little bit different. Normally, I'm sitting in front of this camera telling you guys about something I've just worked on. It's never scripted. I just push record. I start recording, and I tell you about what I've done, and it's easy because it's just talking about the work that I do. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about something that's more on my heart. It's something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I haven't scripted this either. I don't know how this is going to go, but I feel like I need to get this out there. Today, I'm calling out the reviewers. Yeah, I'm calling out all you YouTube reviewers out there who are putting content out there on YouTube. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, Danny, what, what the heck does that mean? What do you mean you're calling out the reviewers? I guess that's kind of complicated in a way. There's several reasons, but in the end, I'm going to get to it. In the end, I'm going to explain to you why I'm calling out the reviewers. And one of the things that's brought this on is I've had a lot of people who watch my videos, and you guys have watched the upgrades and things that I've done, and you've said, hey, why don't you take that upgrade that you've done and send it in a stock pair to YouTube reviewer, whoever your favorite reviewer is, and let them review it. And I've thought, well, no, because they're not ready yet. They're not ready to review my products. And so now you're thinking, what the heck does that mean, Danny? <laughs> they're not ready. Yeah, they're not ready. They're not ready. Um, so let's explain both of those things. And to explain all of that, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to how audio reviews have been done traditionally. And let's look at some of the pitfalls that have centered around that type of reviewing process. And in the beginning, of course, it was done, all the reviews were done by print magazines. And then there was online magazines as well, where the reviewer receives product from a manufacturer and reviews that product and writes a review. Now, some of those reviewers out there are really good. They've got good ears and they're highly respected. Um, some of them are creative writers. <laughs> some of them... Uh, are really good at writing reviews, not so much as listening, but writing reviews. Um, and there's been some issues over the years uh, across the board with credibility of those reviews, and I'll tell you why. Sometimes on a lot of those magazines, the, the consumers get the impression that Every time they read a review, it's the newest, latest, greatest, best there ever was, or whatever it is that's being reviewed. Next month, there's another new, latest, and greatest, best there ever was. 
And the month after that, there's a new, latest, greatest, best there ever was. It's like the reviews are almost cookie cutter reviews. They're all the same. They're written very similarly. And at some point you say, it can't be the latest, greatest, best there ever was every month. You know, at some point you have to make some kind of comparisons or something. And so there's a little bit of loss of credibility because of that perception. Not that it's real or specific, but there's that perception that every review is just going to be a flowery review. It's going to be a great review. And one of the things that causes that is the reviewers are working for the magazines. The magazines are making their money by selling advertising. So uh, what happens is a company will sell a block of advertising for maybe six months worth of advertising to a manufacturer and they'll offer them a review. So you're getting a review and you're getting advertising for X amount of dollars. And it can be a lot of money well into the five figure range uh, for all of that. And so then what, what's really happening, at least the perception of what's happening is that the reviews are being bought and paid for with the advertising. So they're not going to get a bad review. You're buying a review and you're getting that review as part of your deal. And it kind of works both ways too. I can, I can remember being shaken down by some of the big magazines when we would do shows and we would get fantastic show coverage and they'd contact me because all of the reviewers turned in such great show coverage on our room and they would pressure me to try to buy a big block of advertising um, for it to all come out in, in, the, in the issues to come as a follow-up for all this great publicity they're about to give me for our room being so great at the show. So to me, there's a credibility issue there. Like if I get a bunch of great show coverage and then I followed that up or in the same issue, I'm spending a lot of money when advertising, there's the perception that I'm just paying for the reviews. So I, I didn't want to go there and I just, I wouldn't go there. I just, I didn't want to do it. It, um, it doesn't look right. It doesn't have the right feel, you know, and people question that stuff. Another thing that was a problem with a lot of the magazine reviewers, well, I won't say that it was a problem with a lot of the reviewers. It was a big perception problem because sometimes those manufacturers would loan out that product to the reviewer for an extended loan. They would say, Hey, you guys can keep that piece of equipment and use it as a reference for the next year. And so, which was nothing wrong with that. What a great idea, because if they're, if they loved an amplifier, they would use that amplifier in every other review they've got coming up to use or to use that amplifier and listen to certain speakers and things like that. And it would get mentioned over and over. Sounds like a great idea. All sounds on like it's all on the up and up as well. But then later on, you'd see that gear being for sale on audio gone being sold under some alias name. And the word gets around, Hey, that gear is being sold on audio gone. It was the same gear that was being reviewed. And you start thinking, wow, now the reviewers, are making money selling the equipment. They're getting paid by the advertise, getting paid by the magazine, and the magazine getting paid by the manufacturer. So it's all of the reviewers are working for the manufacturers. It's like the, there's the perception of paid reviews, and it doesn't carry a lot of weight. And I've noticed when we've de we've designed a lot of product for many companies, and we've had product reviewed by almost every magazine online and in print. And, and some of them have won almost every industry award. Every time it gets reviewed, it wins an award. So I would know what that effect was. It, a certain speaker would win a bunch of awards and I would get a royalty check in the mail every month for all the units sold. So I would know exactly how many units are sold. And surprisingly, all those reviews and, re and awards didn't sell a lot of product. Uh, what sold a lot of product was if I had a kit that was mentioned on one of the, on the audio forum somewhere and they say something like, oh, I, I built it just for fun to put in my secondary system and 
it sounds better than the speakers of my primary system. It did this or that. Well, we would sell 20 kits, you know, just like that. Um, and then from those people giving feedback, I'd sell a whole bunch more kits. So the consumer's feedback carries greater weight sometimes than the reviewers from the magazine. Then here comes YouTube. Here comes video reviewing. And it all clicked for me when I started watching Ron Bernay do his video reviews. And I remember thinking, wow, this is a game changer. This changes everything uh, because you couldn't hide his enthusiasm. You couldn't hide if he didn't like something. Um, it was real. It was truthful. It was honest. It was refreshing. It was everything that the, that the magazine reviews were not. That was, you got the feeling it was creative writing. Whereas when you watch someone on one of those YouTube channels doing a review and giving feedback, you realize this is really what they think. And you're getting something you can, you can trust. And you realize they're not working for the companies that are sending them product. You know, the companies are sending them product or they're requesting product and reviewing it, but they're making their money on the views. They're making their money on the subscribers and how many people view the channel and they're making their residuals from YouTube and they're not making money from the manufacturers. So they're working for the people who are watching. They're not working for the magazine. They're not working for the manufacturer. It's not a paid review. They're working for the viewers who are watching. And if they're really good and everybody's watching and their subscribers go up, they start making, you know, pretty good money from all the little advertisements that pop up during the review. And if you're watching those things, guys, don't skip the ads. They get paid if the ad plays through. Just watch it. And that way they're actually getting paid for bringing you that information. So... The, the whole gamut has changed as far as who they're working for and what they're doing. And just, it's refreshing. I, I knew as soon as I saw it, this is going to be a game changer. Another problem was with the magazine reviews and that whole process of, of, you know, magazine advertisements is the industry has gotten older and most of the clients out there, customers would be older men. It was, it's male dominated and it was usually men older than me. I'm 55 now. So usually, you know, 50 years old and up, that's about the, the age of our clientele. And we knew that the industry is getting old and we've wondered as, as an industry, how do we reach the next generation? How do we reach a younger audience? And everybody's been kind of scratching their heads thinking, what are we going to do? Well, along comes YouTube and it's done just that. It's bringing in a whole younger audience, a whole new generation of people, of audiophiles who are interested in this stuff. And those younger people aren't going to go to the bookstore, to the magazine racks, and pick up a magazine to read it. They want instant information right there on their cell phone or right there on their computer. And YouTube gives them that instant feedback, instant information. And it works great. I can attest to the fact since we've been doing these informational videos, we started doing the tech talks and then talking about upgrades and stuff that we've been doing. We're just letting you guys look into our world and see what I do. And it's been overwhelming. We've reached a whole new audience, even in other countries. So the, the YouTube thing has changed everything. However, there are a few little caveats, and I'm going to start touching all of those things, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, one of which is that some of the guys have figured out that they can make money doing this by selling gear. So some of the you guys, and I'm not going to call any names, and I'm not going to lecture you on how wrong it is, but I want you to know what the perception is. So when you are requesting gear from a manufacturer, that the arrangement is you're going to keep the gear in exchange for a review, and then later you're selling that gear on your patreon only channel it gives a perception that you're just being paid by the manufacturer to do the review you're being gifted 
the product in exchange for the review. And so when people start figuring that out, the credibility just tanks because you're not going to give that stuff a bad review because you're, what your real intent appears to be is that you're trying to sell that stuff for money. So is it going to get a bad review? No, it's not going to get a bad review. So it goes right back to the credibility issues with some of the online magazines. You're getting paid for a review and that's not going to help subscribers. That's not going to help you build your channel. Um, you know, that's, I would say that's something you need to avoid. If you're good, if you're good at what you do, then people are going to subscribe and they're going to watch you because you're giving them the information that they want and you're going to make the money off of the, the YouTube ads. You're going to make those residuals from the number of views that you get. And that's really the way to build your channel. Um, so let's get to what I, one of some of the things I said earlier when I said, some of you guys aren't ready yet to review my product. What do I mean by that? A lot of you guys, especially you young guys are, you're new into this. You've started your own video channel and some of you are pretty good in front of the camera and you're good with technical stuff and you're setting things up, your lighting. Some of you are, from a professional standpoint, look great. Some of you look really green, but you don't come across as audio files. You're not there yet. You're reviewing budget level gear. Some of you guys, I, I watch your videos and you've got, um, you're doing a review of some product in a bedroom. You've got a bed over here to one side of the room. You've got speakers up against a wall. There's a big blank empty wall in the middle of the speakers and you've got no room treatment and there's no way, regardless of how great the gear is, regardless of how good the speakers are, there's no way you're going to hear all of the things that I work so hard to bring to the table. I spend hours and hours of listening and comparing different capacitors and wiring and connectors and the drivers and what they're doing in order to recreate a three-dimensional sound field, in order to create layering within the sound field, in order to create the space and the environment where you, there's separation between the instruments and things that are going on. And when you're listening to the speakers on a budget system and you've got those speakers right up against a flat wall with no room treatment, you're never going to hear that stuff. You're just going to hear texture and tone and that's it. So you're not going to hear all that stuff that I've worked so hard to do. And I've had the same problem with some of the magazine reviewers. I've had I had a, an online magazine review a product that I designed one time for AV123, and they thought it was incredible. They gave it an industry award. It was a, I don't remember, it was Speaker of the Year, Budget Speaker of the Year, or Product of the Year award. It was a, one of their top awards. And the reviewer set them up on a, on a shelf uh, and used a $199 receiver and a little $49 CD player and basically just listened to the speakers on his shelf and I'm, and he loved them and gave and they, they gave him an award and I'm thinking, Oh man, he never even heard them. He never even heard what all that work that I put into him. You know, I wanted them to be given a fair shake and listened to in the same way you would any other product. So when you guys are doing those online reviews, you have to have the right tools. So one of the reasons I'm calling out reviewers, and that means I'm calling all of you guys out, is I want all of you out there, any of you who are doing online reviews, to get a hold of me. Give me a call. I'm easy to find. And I want you to come here. I want you to come to Texas. I want you to come to Iowa Park, Texas, and I'm going to park you in our listening room, and class is going to start. You're going to learn what to listen for. You're going to learn where the bar is. You need to have a reference system. You can't just use your system as your reference and that's it. You need to have heard a hundred other systems out there. You need the experience. You need to know where the, where the pinnacle is and where do things fall in between. Where's the top? Where's the bottom? Where things fit? You can't just say, here's my reference and it's a bunch of budget gear and it's in an untreated room and expect that you're going to give credible feedback on what those products really sound like. You can't do it. I couldn't do it. The tools of the trade that you need are the same tools of the trade that I use when I'm doing critical listening 
and evaluating my product to make my product better. You need to learn what things make those changes. Like when you're listening to something and you switch out a DAC, you switch out a cable, you switch something out and the sound stage changes, it becomes flatter or deeper and things happen, you need to have a system that's going to set up to where you can hear those things and you need to learn what those things do and your let's say uh, even some of this uh, room treatment I've got in here some of the diffusers you need to know that if you angle those diffusers a little one way or the other it's going to change the way things are placed within the sound stage you need to learn how to set up a room you need to learn a whole bunch of stuff and when you're when you're setting up your own system you need to try and set up a audio system that's at the highest level you can possibly obtain within your budget you need to set the room up properly you need to be able to hear all of this stuff and it makes sense to you and you're just not gonna you're not gonna learn that on your own you're not gonna you're not gonna sit in one spot in your room without any of that experience and and get beyond where you are to get beyond that you've got to have the best tools and you need to learn all about that stuff and this is a perfect example anybody that comes here every company every individual says this is probably the best sounding system I've ever heard the best sound in everything and it's across the board and I'm not saying that to be boastful we've spent years and years developing this stuff and we've reached one of the highest levels in audio this is one of the best sounding systems in the country and you need to come and hear this and spend a day or two here you come to Texas I might even put you up while you're here spend a day or two here and learn it let let me swap out cables and you tell me what did you hear did you hear a difference in cables did it not make a difference what was the difference where did you hear those differences it like I said it's it's going to school time and I want to do this for all of you guys out there, especially you young guys who are just getting started doing this, because you may become really successful. This is the future of our industry. You're the guys who are going to start driving the whole industry. People are going to be watching your videos to learn about everything. And you need to be prepared. You need to be the best you can be. And right now, a lot of you are just really green. And I want to help move the market. I want to help drive the market and the way to do it I think is with all of you guys out there who are doing reviews I want to make you better. You know I really really do I want to make you guys better reviewers and I know I can do that. Um, and I'm gonna call out a few guys by name. I'm gonna call out some reviewers by name. How about that? But not for the reasons that you think. Um, not because I think they need help I'm calling out the guys by name that I think I'd have fun with, uh, the guys that I'd like to hang out with that I think are doing a really good job. First one and I'm going to name is Chris at Vinyl Attack. If you guys haven't watched Chris at Vinyl Attack, Chris is the best. He is one of the best reviewers out there. Professional. He nails everything as far as talking about the product. He has done his job, and the, the way that the videos are presented is the highest level man he is good on camera and I've talked to Chris a little bit in the past I've said dude you need to come down to Texas hang with us and I'm just going to extend that invitation today I, I'd love to have him come down and I think we'd have fun he's one of those guys who he covers everything vinyl and and you guys have to go watch his channel he doesn't have a huge subscribership yet he's still new into this and still building but you guys got to go watch his channel. He's one of the best. Uh, I'd love to see him reviewing other products and venturing out beyond vinyl because he's really good. Um, another guy that I would love to have over would be Gene De La Rosa from Audioholics. Gene runs a really successful uh, website there where they do reviews and everything. They have a forum, and it's very professionally done. And Gene and I have talked uh, many times kind of behind the scenes. We've, we've sent emails back and forth to each other. I like Gene. I really respect him. And we're on opposite ends of the scales on things. Uh, he's way more objective, uh, where I'm objective and subjective. And I do a lot of listening comparisons, and I have different experiences with than Gene. And, but I think 
he's open-minded enough and we have a lot in common. I think we could come together and have a lot of fun listening to stuff and hanging out. And I want to extend an invitation to Gene. And uh, also Gene has quite the following. There's, he's, he's one of the leaders in, in a segment of the market. And there's, there's segments of the market that are purely objective and then purely subjective. And they're back and forth on what matters and what makes a difference and do cables matter and how much. And all, there's, there's a back and forth as if there's a divide in our industry. And I think that divide needs to heal. Uh, that there needs to be some coming together there, and the only way to make that coming together is for guys on those opposite ends of the scale to come together and have the same experiences, listen to the same music, um, swap some stuff out, and see what difference does it really make. Um, and I think he would be a good person to help bring about a little of that uh, moving back together and not being such a divisive, uh, divided industry on some of those little technical things. Uh, there needs to be that coming together. And I think Gene would be, he'd be fun to hang out with. I like Gene. Uh, the other one that I'm going to name, Andrew Robinson. Andrew Robinson, he and I have communicated a little bit uh, in in some uh, emails as well. I like Andrew. Um, he says what he thinks, and he works for the viewers. He has a totally professionally done channel. He's got lots of subscribers, and I like the way he says what he thinks. And, uh, I respect that. And I know he's also kind of on opposite ends of the scales, uh, from myself, but I would love to have him over. Andrew, you're not that far away from me, dude. You're right here in Texas with me. You just need to come up North a little bit and come hang out for a few days. I think it'd be fun. And all the rest of you guys out there, all of you guys, all of you YouTube viewers out there, YouTube, YouTube reviewers, um, just give me a call. You need to come up and let's hang out. You can bring your video cameras. You can shoot footage. You can interview me. You can see what GR Research is all about. You can do whatever you want while you're here. Uh, just hang out and listen and learn. And let's see if we can move the industry even a little further. Bring it together and make it better. Because in a way, we're all kind of relying on each other. I mean, you guys need us as manufacturers and designers to send you products and we need you guys we need you guys doing reviews and we need honest reviewers and we need well-educated um, great reviewers out there because that's what's good for the industry and that's what's going to help build our industry so we kind of need each other so that's i guess that's kind of everything i've been feeling and everything i've kind of wanted to get out and i hope that came out well and I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And I appreciate all those guys um, adding to my subscribers. And that's it, I guess. I hope I covered everything. And I'll see you guys on the next video. So yeah, that is the video. Danny Ritchie of Geo Research has uh, called out the reviewers. And not only mm. did you call out the reviewers, you like established kind of a history of reviewing within yeah. our community, kind of the way that it has gone, kind of the old guard and the old way of doing advertising and reviewing. You yeah. talked, you know, about the transition of things moving into like a media driven format like videos and YouTube and you felt like that was a game changer. That's why I started my channel is I felt like Oh yeah, I thought your channel was a game changer. First time I watched your videos. I thought, yeah. I thought, wow, this is this is gonna change everything. Yeah, I mean one of the things you brought up is exactly you you, you said it exactly like as if I was saying it is I had so many of my friends come over and they would they would be interested in music, they'd be interested in hi-fi, they'd be interested in mm -hmm. all this stuff. They would never go and buy a hi-fi magazine. Right. Oh, they never do. Never. Yeah. So there's a disconnect of, you know, who's actually buying those magazines and the potential customers and the potential folks out there that would be interested in your products. Yeah. We got to be able to tell them about it. Yeah. There was you know? a big disconnect between the old guard, you know, the yeah. old customer base and the next generation. There's just been this gap there. Yeah. You know, and I feel like the YouTube reviewers are totally transcending that gap. They're bringing it to that whole new generation. It's so important to me 
that they be as good as they can be because I think they're going to lead our industry. I hope so. Yeah, I think yeah. they really are. Yeah, I hope so. So I guess, you know, the first the first talking point that I want to establish and probably the biggest one, um, and then we can kind of chat about a couple other things, was you're setting this up as these are your hopes and desires for folks that are reviewing hi-fi gear, right? right? This is like if you're going to do this, then where what you said in that video is you have a responsibility here. Right. Yes, and a lot of people are going to trust what you have to say. And your entire aim here is I want you to hear the speak, like truly the voice of the speaker. Oh, yeah. Hear what we're trying to create. Yeah. You know, these are the tools we're using to create our products. You know, understand that and know that these same tools are necessary for those reviewers to do their job as well. So for me, I would say, um, I've talked about this in great length on my channel over the years. Environment matters. It, it oh, yeah. matters a ton. Oh, yeah. The you room know? is as important part of the system as everything else in the system. So when you, when you talk about, when you, when you made the comment, these guys aren't ready. These guys are not ready. Instantly, I think that some folks are going to be offended by that. Like, Could be. What a jerk. <laughs> Who's yeah. this? They're going to think that. Think Who's that. this guy telling me that I'm not ready? Yeah. Um, I think the first thing that we need to establish is you're not talking about their ability to hear. You're not talking about mm -hmm. their ability to communicate. You're not talking about their potential to communicate or their potential to hear. You literally are talking about their environment and and what right. they are trying to accomplish, like you gave an example, in a bedroom or yeah. like... Even in some of the listening rooms I've seen, you know, they're... Nice sized rooms, but there's no room treatment. Yeah, you sure. Know? And they're hardwood floors and things that would really inhibit me from even being able to do my job. Yeah. I couldn't do the things I need to do and listen for the things I need to listen for in an environment like that. It, I, I, that my tools would be gone. You know, it'd be a huge handicap. And in the same token, they're, they're reviewing gear in those environments and it's got to be better. It's yeah. got to be better. You know? So I want to play devil's advocate on this because I think that a lot of folks are going to know where I'm coming from when I when I do this. What about the reviewers? And there's a lot of reviewers out there that would say to that hogwash because all of these speakers are going in ordinary rooms for the most part anyway. So who mm -hmm. cares if I'm reviewing it in an ordinary, typical setting? What? Right. Who cares? It's going to end up going in some, you know, Joe Blow's room anyways. And what would you say to that? It's just like some of the manufacturers that would show up at a show with the same exact mentality. These speakers are going to go into an average room and an average setting is the living room. And it's a secondary thought to what that room is supposed to be for. So why bring in room treatment? Why set the room up properly? And yeah. then you go to their room at the show and you listen and you think, Ugh. who's going to buy the product because it didn't show very well. It didn't sound good. Yeah. And they could have gone so much further had they had just allowed you to hear their product. And I think as a reviewer, it's important that they're capable of hearing that product. And to do that, you're just not going to, you're not going to get it in an average, you know, living room setting where there's no room treatment, there's no anything. And you're just using budget gear. I mean, you're going to, you're going to give them an opinion or a thought on what you think about it but you're never going to hear all that time and effort that the manufacturer may have put into something to make it go beyond that point. Yeah. Just to, to separate the good from the great. You're never going to hear it. Hmm. When you talked about all of these things you're trying to achieve, when you talked about, I work so hard to try to achieve these specific things that I want you to be able to mm -hmm. hear. What are those things? What is it that you yeah. are hoping that they can hear in the right environment, in the right room? What right. are you going for? Well, we're wanting to create a listening environment or, a, or a, the listening impression when you're when you are listening of a a live performance. That's what we're always kind of shooting for at that three dimensional effect, where things are in the sound stage, and distance between things, and hearing those details and things in the recording that would normally be missed. You know, it's just a continual effort 
to make things better and better and better. And some of us just strive like crazy yeah. uh, to reach those next points. I can remember um, there would be cliques of us guys, you know, groups of us that were all friends. And we'd, we'd go to each other's houses all the time. You know, yeah. I'd go to visit Gary Dodd, for instance. Yeah. And Gary had done something new. And we'd, th- we'd all think, oh, my goodness, man, wow. Yeah. You know, we got to try that. And it would go to our system. Yeah. And then back and forth. And, I, and our systems just continually got better and better. Uh, because we're sharing things and we're trying things and we're experimenting and we're sharing those experiences and we're building on that and you know pretty soon we're from here to here yeah you know and it's just all part of the process you called out the reviewers and that there were a couple in there that surprised me and yet they didn't surprise me because again i know you you want gene to come down yeah, I'd love to. That have one is. I think that one is going to be of all the curveball. They're going to be like, "You want Gene to come down?" Yeah. Well, Gene and I have communicated before. We've talked about him coming. I've invited him before. Yeah, and he wasn't opposed to it at all. But it was, it's more of a logistics thing. He lives a long way from me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be quite a journey for him to come. So I don't know if he can make it. Yeah, it would definitely take some some planning for him to come from Georgia. Yeah, all the way to Texas. But is um, that where he's at? He's in Georgia. I think so. Florida. I thought he was in Florida. Is he in Florida? I don't know. Oh, he's somewhere over there. Where are you? Where are you? He's way over there. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe is. I don't know. But one of the things that you mentioned is, sure enough, there is this like tribal divide. Oh yeah. You know, it's like we, and I think that people. It's almost like the political scene. You know, you're it far is. left or far right. Yeah, right? far right, far left. You know, mask, no mask. You know, the whole. It's like it becomes so tribal, and I think that we have, we have lost touch with just the experience. Yeah. Like it's okay. for the love of music. Right. Yeah. And, like in music enjoyment. That in the end, that's what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, so, you know, for me, I kind of like your positioning in here is there is no catch here. Just come down and listen to music. That's it. And then just tell me what you think because then it's your experience. Like, yeah. did you hear a difference? And if you didn't, that's cool. But if you did, what differences do you think that you heard? Like, right. where where was it? You yeah, know? it's like I want those guys to have those same experiences I just mentioned when all those groups of guys would get together and we would go to each other's systems. and yeah. That experience is invaluable, man. I mean, it, it is. It's it's everything, and these new reviewers have to have that. They have to go to shows, and I know shows are kind of they're on the down now. COVID kind of put a damper on all the shows and uh, things like that, and it's still a kind of question on my mind how valuable the shows are because you're only reaching the people that are there and the and what the press reaches of the coverage of the show. Whereas the things we're doing on YouTube, we're reaching thousands of people in yeah. just hours. Yeah, and it's some such a bigger platform. It is the platform, so it's it to my in my mind, it's so important that these guys that are going to lead our industry be the best that they can be. Yeah, and some of them are they're just getting started. They're yeah. they're green. They've never been to the shows. Sure, they love audio, and they're in the right generation, and they know how all this works. They can set up the cameras and do all this, and they're into that. But they need the experience, and they just don't have that experience yet. Yeah, and I'd love to just say, look, come here. Listen. Gain some experience. You know, another thing that I would mention, too, is, you know, clearly this might be, this might come across as Danny wants the reviewers to come down and only listen to his speakers to find out whether or not his speakers are great. But I, I don't think that's, that that's a part of it, but I think... They could get that impression from me. They could get that impression, but I believe, because I do care about room and room acoustics, and I know mm-hmm. the importance of it, we could literally set in speakers they've already reviewed yeah. in your room, let them hear it, and I think it would be that'd be a whole different review. It would be a it would they would be shocked like yeah oh like this, this is, is how the speakers this is what they could do yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> right or this is what they couldn't do and I thought they could do it you know it's like you you start it goes both ways in a in a proper room. You hear what a speaker can do really well, mm-hmm. but you can also easily hear problems. Oh, yeah. It's like that's when you can start pick apart, picking apart, like, there's some clear issues here, some problems here. Yeah. I have customers that own our product, and they come up because they want to hear something else. Yeah. And then they listen to an Encore, a little XLS Encore. Yeah. And they're stunned because 
it's way beyond what they were getting at their house with the same speaker. Yeah. You know, so yeah. they leave thinking, okay, what 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 DAC is it? You you know what 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 is that Mac Mini thing? In, yeah. And in the, in the, in the in, and what what, what is it, all this stuff? And, and and you're running on batteries and 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 where did you get that room treatment? And you know and yeah. Then it starts them. It's like a huge push right back into that journey of yeah. Now I can go do these simple things yeah. and make this huge improvement. Yeah. And they get that just immediately. Yeah. Um, Another point that I would want to make, and this was a side conversation that I had with Randy when he came out and he listened to your speakers. I don't. I I also feel like it would be easy to think that what Danny is saying, you need to hear the extremes because the extremes are the only speakers that you're going to love, and that's it, because they're sitting right behind you. And here you are talking about come and listen to my system. Well, what's interesting is I had a side conversation with Randy, and he prefers the encores. Yeah, there's he people just, that like that. He just loves he there's something about the humble yeah. encore. So it's not even about the most expensive. Like mm -hmm. you make just come and listen and yeah. spend some time listening because you put as much work and effort into an encore oh, yeah. as you do as an extreme. Sometimes it's tougher when you're when you're working on like the X series product lines, there's a budget level in mind. I'm trying to hit the best. Yeah performance within that price point when you take those restrictions off and you say hey go bananas go bananas it's easy <laughs> yeah it's like okay right. man yeah let yeah. me show you what i can do here <laughs> yeah. so uh so sometimes more work goes into those more budget level products to try and create as much as possible yeah out of those products and not spend a bunch of money it's wisely spent money where does it matter and where is it most cost efficient so there's a lot of development that goes into those little products, man. Yeah, I know there is. Yeah. Yeah, you, you care about every single part that is being put into your speakers. Yeah. You know, every single part. And, um, the, and those guys, if they, those reviewers, if they want to come and bring gear, man, they can come and bring yeah. gear. Bring speakers. Bring their amps. You know, bring whatever that you want. Yeah. Compare stuff. You, yeah. You really learn more when you compare stuff. Yeah. Because you think, okay, this is what my speaker sounds like. Okay, well, that's what it sounds like at your house on your gear in your room. You know, there's a lot of other variables that are creating what your system sounds like. Yeah. And when you start changing stuff out, even within your own system, if you've got it set up to where you can hear those differences, suddenly your system starts getting better and better. Cause, yeah. Because, you know, you're, you're learning and you're gaining experience. And all these guys, they just need the experience. Yeah, you're right. Um I don't want this to get too lengthy, so I'm going to finish with the big one. This is the one that I, of all of the things when I watched this video, I was like, I hope this isn't misunderstood. I want you to take a minute and explain that, does, it, does everything that you just said in this video, does it apply to your customers? To your customers that just... Um, yes and no. I mean, no, first off, because... The customer can enjoy the product in any, any any environment. Now, we have customers that will order an XLS Encore base level model. They put it in their garage, and it's perfect. They love it. It's great. Yeah. They enjoy it. It's not about whether or not you're enjoying it or not. It's the people that are actually doing the reviews. They have to have a benchmark. Yeah. They have to have a standard. That's very different than the customer. And now, on the other hand, though, the customer, as he gets started on this journey we wind up helping him or her and pushing them in a way to where they're reaching those levels. It's like, yeah, they call me on the phone and we talk about their system and then they go do something. They change room treatment or speaker positioning and they call me back and say, okay, wow, it did whatever. You know, we start them on those journeys and try to help them all along the way. So the same thing applies to the customer who's trying to, reach that next level yeah but you can enjoy our products that you, you don't have to have a high-end system to enjoy the product you can enjoy it on anything yeah for sure good that's all i got man that's all you got huh? all right yeah, i guess the rest of the questions they'll just throw them at us we're yeah this one's yeah. gonna be interesting by the way yeah uh chris gene andrew i'm nine minutes away from danny's house so if you decide to come down you better come and visit me and hang out with me yeah, we could all hang out together and listen in my room and hang you know it'd be fun oh yeah heck yeah i i equally respect every single guy that you mentioned in there 
I respect oh, yeah. them all. You know, it's like, yeah, come on. But the viewers are thinking, oh man, he's about to call some people out. This is gonna be. And we're gonna call out. <laughs> but but I called out the guys that I liked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, uh. All right. So, um, any other questions? Anything else that you want clarification on? Comments down below. Um, I've known Danny for a really long time. He's a very level-headed guy. When he's saying things like classes in session or I don't want you to take that as this guy has like this huge ego or anything like that. It's truly you you just have to experience what he what he hears, what he puts his heart into, and then you will I think there will be a, a light bulb moment of okay, I get it. I get it. Classes in session. It's fun watching. My room sucks. I got to go buy a new house. <laughs> watching customers come in and they, they think, oh, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know it could be this good. Yeah. It's yeah. always fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. We're done. We'll see you guys in the next video. See you in the next video.